should say of the French folk song patterns on A, B, C, and D, that it's very important the quarter notes are in the middle part of the bow, or lower half to middle part of the bow, and that on the last quarter note before the dotted half note, we get as far to the tip as we can, so that our bow has enough room to play that very, very long note coming up. Here is circle C, also with the French folk song, and this one really gets our fingers moving as well as the bow. So the same bow pattern as before, and now a more active left hand part. Now letter D, which has a skipping pattern. Each measure is one pattern, followed by the next, and rising one note of a D scale on its way. So it's a skip, and then one step back. Repeat that note, skip, one note back. And that's how, that's how the pattern proceeds. Here is letter D, helping us with French folk song. I should say that there's an alternate way to play this where you use fourth fingers instead of crossing to the A. Sometimes it's helpful to use fourth finger and sometimes it can be more work than it's worth. Here are the places I would use fourth finger to prevent an extra string crossing in the same exercise. Exercise circle D. Letter E is similar to letter D, but takes an extra skip. This exercise is quite a bit extra than it needs to be. So think of it as a very, very fine challenge. And if you can play circle E, you can most certainly play French folk song. The next part of the exercises, starting at letter F, is a way to save some paper. So for example, letter F, that entire line is a D scale. If you played it as it's written, it would be whole notes. To make things speed up, I may speed up this video. Another way to use the F line is to apply the rhythms from letter H through letter V. For example, if I chose the rhythm Q, that's a rhythm that happens in stand up, sit down, rock, rock, rock. 
that's exactly how it's written in the piece. What you're going to do is take the rhythm at Q for that one measure and apply it to every single pitch of the scale for circle F. Here's how that would go. Circle F scale with letter Q rhythm. <laughs> through all the rhythms and give you just a little taste of them. I won't play the whole scale, but I will announce each rhythm. So here's rhythm H, four quarter notes. Here's rhythm I, quarter, quarter, eight, eighth quarter, otherwise known as one, two, three, and four. Here's rhythm J, one, two, three, and. Here's rhythm K, a dotted half note, which lasts three quarter beats. Here's rhythm L, three quarter notes and a rest. Here's rhythm M. One and two, three, rest. Here's rhythm N. Rhythm O. Rhythm P. Here's Q again. Rhythm R, all eighth notes. Rhythm S again, rest, two and three, rest. Rhythm T, one quarter note, the rest are rests. Rest, 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 rest. U is what's called a tremolo. Since it's written in two half, note, half notes, I will accent each note's beginning. Whoops, I mean to do two. Here's V, a whole note of tremolo notes. When you do tremolo, do it at your speed, whatever that fast speed is for you. very fast. Try not to get too tense to make the sound happen, although you will be moving quickly. Line G uses a low two or F natural note and a low two on the A string or a C natural note. That's the only difference between the two scales. scale is important to help us with Mars walk and stand up, sit down, rock, rock, rock. W, there's an exercise for the whole orchestra to try in supporting the violins in playing a low first finger. Normally the first finger is about here and a low first finger is between the first finger tape and the nut on the instrument. So that low one 
for a violin part one is F natural on the E string. And for violin part two in the viola parts, it's A, B flat. So viola players take notice. You have to play a low first finger, not on the tape, but right there. Here is letter W for violins and violas to play low one. And then the same thing at letter X, but on the A string. Y is the same, but it gives the opportunity for cellos and basses to also try a low one here. I've always felt that they shouldn't have gotten left out, so these measures are for them. The next exercise is at letter Z. In the very beginning of Stand Up, Sit Down, Rock, 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 there's a short section with slow quarter notes and the occasional slurred quarter note. A slur is connecting two or more notes in one bow direction. You could do this easily by just playing that Jaws piece, or what some of you call Baby Shark. You could put many notes under the bow. Here in this exercise, it is two notes per bow. So when you see that curvy line, the bow keeps going for both notes. So for example, in measure one, we have E, F sharp on an up bow, to, uh, down bow direction. So that looks like this when we coordinate it. Down. And I suggest trying it in the air first before you put it on the string. So you can think of the bow moving and changing how we play. Up until now, you've probably changed bow direction. <laughs> every time the finger changes, and you've gotten really used to that. And now we have to sort of break ourselves of that habit and try a new habit. And I think it's really easy to try it with jaws, just down. And then try some more slurs that way. So here's letter Z. A similar um, excerpt to the last one it also comes from Stand Up, Sit Down, Rock, 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 and instead of a uh, two quarter notes, it's a half note. So it's almost exactly the same excerpt. Um, and it will change how the bow directions work. Your very first slur will be, or all of our slurs will be on the up bow direction in this excerpt. And now that I look at it, maybe try AA first if you're finding like Z is a little tr too tricky for you today. exercise is a reverse of the AA exercise. It starts with two quarter notes and the last part of the measure is a half note. The slur is immediately on the down bow. excerpts feel easier to you to try to play than the others, by all means, they don't have to be played in order. And here is CC, which is all quarter notes with slurs.
The remaining empty measures are for you to fill in if you'd like to take notes, literally writing notes or writing words, whatever helps you. If you find yourself needing to write in note games, that's okay. But please treat them like training wheels, something to be removed and taken away once you don't need them anymore. We want musicians in fifth grade who are reading all the notes in this packet. Use a helper until you don't need it. You can always write finger numbers above the notes. That is a good practice that all professionals do.